Hey everybody, Rick the Radio Guy here, and today I'm surrounded by radios. And the reason I'm surrounded by radios is we get lots of questions about how we actually connect our radios into our Cisco Instant Connect system. I have this beautiful graphic that shows private land mobile radio integration. There are really two ways that we can do this. We can do this through using what we call a donor radio, like I have here on the table, and using cables and cards, or we can do advanced integration through a packet gateway. So let's talk about the packet gateway first because that's the easiest one. All of this stuff as we move towards modern digital radio systems is now getting to the point where the transmitter, the receiver, the transceiver base has generally a small purpose-built computer inside and an RJ45 connector on the back. It's just another device on your network you can plug into and we can use our DFSI or ISSI gateway or our NXDN gateway, come back through the network, and then redistribute that radio over IP out to all the various endpoints. So that works really well. That's the easy way. Now, that's not what a lot of people have. So the most important thing for you to know is for everything from this very expensive Motorola uh, radio to this... Um, much less expensive Midland radio down here, we treat every radio as essentially a microphone, a speaker, a push to talk button on the side, and if we're lucky, we have something called COR or COS that lets us know when to open the, the uh, incoming audio line so we don't have to use Vox or VAD, okay? So how do we do that? Well, essentially, let me start with this little Midland here. I have one of these cables here that plugs into the side of this Midland radio, right here like that, very simple, and that gives me my transmit and receive audio and my push to talk triggering, okay? The other end of that will plug into a card that we put into the router. So this is basically what we call a VIC-2 card all right, VIC-2 E&M card, VIC-2s or VIC-3s, depending on which series of router. Or if you're using the new 4300, you'll use this NIM, this network interface module. This is what's called a NIM-4 E&M. Now, the 4300 router series right now, not all the versions of software support the E&M capability uh, for radio and the LAN mobile radio feature set. So you'll have to be on Denali or Everest, the iOS code releases, okay? But we'll put that down, because we know iOS code releases change. We'll go back to our good old-fashioned card here. And you'll notice that I've got some little blocks here. This is a blue one. Uh, that's actually an attenuator for the blue pair of wires. So if you think about it, on this card, you have a transmit and a receive pair of wires coming in for your audio streams, the uh, blue and the green. And then you have the orange wires, which are the PTT, and the brown, which are your COR or COS, PTT being the push to talk. All right, so we take that into the router. Now, we are going to have in the router, this card will be inserted, and you will see that when the card's inserted in the uh, chassis, as you can see here, you'll see that there are two small LEDs, and when the card is receiving audio, the LEDs will be green. When we push to talk from the transmit side, from the network side, you'll see that LED turn red on the card. So there you go. Green and red LEDs, you can see them toggling back and forth on the card, indicating transmit and received audio. So I have a lot of different radios here. I have this Kenwood Mobile radio down here in the middle, and I have an interface cable for it. And we want to let you know that we don't just bring audio out of these cables. This radio, Kenwood has licensed us their control protocols, so we can actually take anything we see on the screen and do on the front panels, we can take back into the router through serial control, and we can re literally reach out and change the channels, adjust the volumes, tweak the knobs using serial control parameters to control this radio. Not all manufacturers have shared their protocols with us, but uh, Kenwood certainly has. Another one that's been a great vendor for us is Tate. So I'm gonna take this Tate radio here. This one's a portable. And you see on the back, 
Get a close shot there, guys. I've got this little plug here with this funny shaped thing on it. And without looking, I'm gonna try to take that off. That covers that very interesting connector on the back. And no, there is no standard for these. Every radio manufacturer does it differently. So I have an interface cable that matches that connector. To tie it into the system, I mate the two together, turn until you hear the click, and now this is ready to go into the system. Okay, so that is the Tate. We have the same thing here with the EF Johnson. This one will go together a little more quickly, I promise you. But once again, a radically different looking connector with a radically different looking connector on the cable. Put the sections together, clip, and done. That happens to share the same cable that Motorola does. Now, how do I know all these things and where do you get all these cables? Well, I've been doing this a long time, okay? But the way we handle the cables is we go to our friends at networkradio.com. And I've been in Dwayne's super secret uh, underground lair. He has all the different connectors, all the different blocks, and he sits down and works out all the schematics so that you don't have to. Okay, and he's got a whole collection of special tools that we use for interfacing. For instance, the blue side attenuator, the green side attenuator, the opto isolator, the reverse polarity opto isolator. Oh my goodness, why do you need all this stuff? The attenuators with the blocking capacitors because they have the black cable on them instead of the colored cable. When do you use all that? you call Dwayne. The other thing I will tell you is when you go to networkradio.com, you can get a complete listing of what he has on his website, but if you don't see it there, reach out and contact him through email. Now, if you absolutely have to, you can build your own cables. I don't recommend this uh, because unless you're a radio technician and have the appropriate licensing, you probably should not be inside these boxes at all. But I have made some little pigtail tools here with my different colors represented and some clips to actually be able to go on, sit down and bug this out myself and figure out what I need to do. And then additionally, I've even made little blocks like these RJ45 blocks here, these coupler blocks, which I've got different colors of tape around because those do different things like filter. Uh, this one here is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor high cut filter. So you can do things like that, advanced tricks. Much easier just to go to Dwayne. Anyway, that's how we do it. You can see we've got, we've got a vast assortment of radios, a huge assortment of cables here. The guys in the studio will tell you there's even more over in a box on the side. I just didn't have room on the table. And then we take it all out of the radio, into the interface card, into the router. We let the router do the conversion to radio over IP. All right, I hope that demystifies uh, how we do the radio conversion. I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.